Greetings, everyone. Hope you are doing well as you're continuing to self-isolate and practicing social distancing. Um, I've been talking to you about the DNA of strength and courage, and I want to give you another segment of that today. These overlap, of course. They're not uh, individually uh, exclusive um, from each other. <clears throat> I've talked about the ability to hold on to yourself, having that that sense of identity, um, more than just feeling good about yourself, which is good, that's important, but being able to hold on what you know is true about yourself. Boy, this is a time when we need to be able to do that. Then in my last session, I talked about um, being able to calm yourself, steal your mind, calm your heart, how important that is in, in these days that we're living in today. It's always been important, but in a crisis, uh, these things even become more uh, important. So hope you've been gaining something from these um, short um, uh, lessons that I've been doing, and I wanna continue that today to the third component of the DNA of Strength and Courage, which we often refer to as uh, the four pillars of emotional health. Now, that is extremely important. Uh, we've covered two of them. Today, we're going to cover the third one, and that is the ability to emotionally ground yourself. Wow, how important that is in what's going on in our culture today. Um, we often do things and say things um, in the heat of an argument uh, um, that often ruin our lives. People not being emotionally grounded do some crazy things sometimes, and we call it getting emotionally hijacked because they have left the realm of reason and now they're just responding or reacting um, uh, rather than knowing a response, they're just simply reacting in an emotional state. And when we do that, we tend to sometimes scream at other people, we break alliances, with family members, we break alliances with our children, break alliances with our boss. Um, anybody around us, our employees, sometimes we break alliances with because we just don't have the emotional grounding that we need. So I'm gonna talk about that today. <clears throat> Being emotionally grounded is more about responding than reacting. Use those two terms a while ago. Uh, response is appropriate to the situation. Um, it's, it's, it's applied to the situation and has an appropriate response. Um, if we're over responding or even under responding, then we don't have the emotional stability of emotional health that we need to be able to cope uh, with life and the experiences that we're going through. Now, <clears throat> Being emotionally grounded requires some, some facts. Um, here's a place you could become emotionally grounded today is to be aware of the facts of what's going on in our culture, our society. Grounded in the facts of the coronavirus, not the scary things that you're hearing. Oh, this is the worst scenario. This is how bad it could get. Well, we're not going to how bad it could get. We are grounded in the facts that we're doing everything to mediate this, this uh, virus and to bring it to a level uh, that's not the biggest outcome. This is where a lot of people get into trouble in the era of their thinking. They're always looking for the worst instead of looking for the best. They're always saying what if instead of what is. See, if we learn to live in the present, not some future uh, event that may never happen or the exploitation of fear in our culture today, uh, what causing people to run out and empty the grocery stores and all of those kind of things. And thankfully at this recording, that's getting a little better, which we're very thankful for. And you can be grounded in the fact that things are being taken care of, supplies are there, and, and we're going to not just get through this. I want to talk more about that a little later. 
it's, it's not enough for us just to get through this. We need to have some plans on the other side. And I'm going to talk about that in the next segment on uh, purposeful endurance. Um, but I want us to I want us to use some I want to use some language here that uh, some scripture rather that's very important for all of us um, in this time, and it's from Second Corinthians ten thirty eight. Now, most people that are familiar with the Bible are familiar with this passage, but it's a very important passage uh, for us in, in being grounded. It, here's what it says, and I'm reading again from um, the Message translation. The world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have, never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. That's a powerful sentence. But they are for demolishing that entire massive corrupt culture. Now, we can talk about corrupt culture in many capacities. Well, let's talk about corrupt culture and fear-mongering uh, that's going on today in the uh, uh, news media, the internet, uh, social media, all of that. If, if you just anchor yourself in that, your anxiety levels are going to go way off the chart. And here's what it says. We use our, God, our, our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by God. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. Now, wow, how powerful that is in our culture today. Um, it, says, it goes on to say, you stare and stare at the obvious, but you can't see the forest for the trees. If you're looking for a clear example of someone on Christ's side, um, why do you so quickly cut me out? Paul speaking to the Corinthians. Believe me, I'm quite sure of my standing with Christ. Here, here is Paul being grounded. Here he is being sure of where his belief system is. Now, that's an important thing. Many people today, unfortunately, don't have a belief system. They don't have their life anchored in the Word of God and in the uh, work that Christ did for us on the cross. And consequently, they're freaking out. But when you know who you are and you know who God is, you have a place to be grounded. Um, and, and Paul goes on talking about uh, his relationship with the Corinthians. You may think I overstate the authority he gave me, but I'm not backing off. Every bit of my commitment is for the purpose of building you up, after all, not tearing you down. How important is that for us today, that we're building each other up, we're encouraging each other, we are looking after each other, we are making sure that our loved ones are taken care of and that they're, they're checking in on us as well. So let me remind you again that being grounded is extremely important. Grounded in the facts, grounded in your beliefs. And if you don't have a belief system, this is a great opportunity for you to start looking at your relationship with God and asking him into your life. It's a very simple thing to do. Just asking him to forgive you of your sin. Ask him to be the Lord of your life, and then start turning your life around. This is the power of God's forgiveness for all of us. I am grounded in God's grace. I am grounded in God's love, and I am grounded in God's mercy. I pray that every morning. Thank you, God, for your love that is beyond our comprehension. Thank you for your grace that is always sufficient. Thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. When you're grounded in the truths of God's word, and then you listen to the facts and not the fear in our culture today, you're going to find yourself being able to cope in a way that not just to survive, but to thrive. So hopefully these little 
um, points that I'm making are helpful to you. Hold on to yourself, know what is true, know how to calm yourself, how to soothe yourself, and then to be emotionally grounded. These are extremely important for us in our culture today. And I'll see you in a few days with our fourth pillar of emotional health, the DNA of strength and courage. Thank you. And God bless. Thank you.